Let's practice naming some ketones now. A ketone is pretty similar to an aldehyde. It has a carbon-oxygen double bond. Uh, it's different from an aldehyde in that on both sides of the carbon-oxygen double bond, we have carbon chain. So there's no hydrogens here at all. The carbon-oxygen double bond is somewhere in the middle of the carbon chain. And that's just going to make um, one little change to the, the process that we take for naming the molecule. So first, we find the longest carbon chain that contains the... Um, carbon oxygen double bond just like we normally would do with an aldehyde may or may not be the longest carbon chain in the molecule and then once we find that longest carbon chain we do want to number it to give the carbon oxi oxygen double bond the lowest possible number so that's like normal as well but it's not going to be number one in this situation if it was car on carbon number one it would be an aldehyde so it's going to be somewhere on carbon number two or higher this one's on carbon number two Include any stereochemistry if you have it, name substituents if you have them, just like normal, and then name the parent chain of the molecule. So two things that are different here. First of all, um, the ending, because it's a ketone, the ending is changed from E to own, own to indicate that it's a ketone. So we'll drop the E and replace it with own. Um, thing number two, we have to locate the position of the carbon-oxygen double bond in this case because it's not an aldehyde. It's not guaranteed to be in any particular spot. All we know for sure is that it's not on carbon number one. So we do have to say where the carbon-oxygen um, double bond is located. In this example, the carbon-oxygen double bond is located on carbon number two. So this molecule's name is 2-butanone or butan 2 -one showing that the carbon-oxygen double bond is on carbon number two. Let's practice with this example right here. First, we want to find the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon-oxygen double bond. If we go to the left, that gives us this chain right here. Remember, in a tie, you want to go with the, go with the chain that has functional groups on it. And then also to the right, we've got this portion of the molecule right there. So when we're finding the longest carbon chain, we want to look to the left and also to the right of the carbon-oxygen double bond. Number that carbon chain to give the ketone the smallest possible number. So for this molecule, that means we want to be numbering from right to left. And we have no stereochemistry on this molecule. Terminal alkenes don't have cis or trans stereochemistry. Locate any substituents that we have. Well, we have that methyl group on carbon number four, so this is going to be a four methyl. And then name the parent chain. This is a five carbon molecule, so it is a pentane, except that five carbon chain has a double bond present. So instead of a pentane, it's a pentene. And we always need to say the location of double bonds. So this double bond, which is starting at carbon number four, that makes this molecule's name pent-4-ene. Uh, we've got to drop that last E and replace it with own because it's a ketone. But ketones, um, their position is not implied. So we have to say that this ketone is on carbon number two. So we've got to get that carbon number two in there. And this is one of those molecules where putting the numbers in the middle of the name is essential. Like you just really would not be able to clearly name this molecule if you didn't use the numbering in the middle of the name. 4-methylpent-4-ene-2-one. Let's practice um, with some molecules down here. So first of all, find the longest carbon chain that includes the ketone. That's going to be this chain right here. We want to indicate our stereochemistry on car uh, carbons 3 and 4. We have a double bond. This double bond is trans. We, have, um, we do have a chiral carbon, number 5, but we don't have any wedge or dash to let us know if this is an R or if it is an S. Since we have no idea if it's R or S, we can't indicate stereochemistry. So it's trans. The substituent, the only substituent is the chloro on carbon number 5. It's a 6 carbon chain, which would make it a hexane, except that we do have that double bond that is on carbon number three, so it's a hexene. We have to say where that double bond is located. So we can't just say hexene. We have to say that it is a three hexene. 
we've got a um, now we have to name the ketone portion. So we've got to drop that last e and replace it with own for the ketone. Also, we cannot imply the position of a ketone. We have to say where it's located as well. Trans 5 chlorohex 3 ene 2 own Huge name. Here's our next example. This is cyclic. Ketones can be cyclic molecules, um, just like other cyclics. The, the number is, we get to choose number one. So the ketone is going to be on carbon number one. And just like with other cyclics, because we're choosing the position of carbon number one, we're not going to include that in the name. So this has one substituent, the bromo on carbon number three, three bromo. Parent chain here is a cyclohexane. But we drop that last E and replace it with own. And again, we don't have to say one cyclohexanone or cyclohexan one own because with cyclics, the one is always implied. Last but not least, we've got a molecule that has ooh two ketones. That happens sometimes. We want to give both of them combined the smallest possible numbers. So that means we want two and four, which is better than three and five. We've got a substituent on carbon number five. That's a 5-methyl. This is a six-carbon chain, so it's a hexane. Um, it's a, if we have a diketone, then we would name this as a dione. Whenever we have a di-functional group, like diene, dione, di whatever, we don't drop that last E, so we're going to leave that there. 5-methyl hexane dione. We do still need to give the position of both of those ketones. So two and four dione. And then last but not least, we've got again another set that um, goes by their common names. This little molecule, or non-systematic names, this little molecule, this would be two propanone, but this is commonly referred to as acetone. This is acetophenone which you learned about um, when we were naming the substituents uh, or substituted benzenes. And then this one is called benzophenone.